All right, so this is gonna be the first video for 2021, and I thought of giving you guys something new. You know, we usually create Shopify apps through a host, or we usually upload files through FileZilla, and I thought of those people who doesn't really have a server or a host or a website where they can upload their files. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create Shopify apps locally. So let's go to our computer. Okay, so you have a couple of options, especially if, you're, if you want to uh, develop Shopify apps locally. So for example, you're going to use PHP, then you have two options. It's either you manually set up your working station, like install PHP, um, Apache, and all of that, or you use SAMP or WAMP. So for this video, we're going to use SAMP. So in Google, just type SAMP, and then let's just open the website of SAMP, and then you can download the latest version of SAMP. So if you're using Windows, you can download the installer for Windows. If you're using Linux, you can download that. If you're using Mac OS or Apple, then feel free to download the Mac OS version. Since I already have one, I don't have to do that. So I'll just run my SAMP control panel like so, and we can just run our localhost by typing in our browser, localhost, and that should give us the following website or web page. So welcome to SAMP for Windows 7. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is to install Angrok. And that's how you can tunnel your localhost to a secure web page or a URL. So let's open um, our browser again or a new tab. Let's search um, Angrok. And then in here, we can just visit, of course, Angrok. And then you can just download by clicking the Get Started for free or by clicking the Download button right over here in the navigational bar. And then you can just select Download for Windows if you're using Windows, of course. and Or you can select other OS such as Mac OS, Linux, and so on, or FreeBSD. Who uses that anyway? So I'm just going to select Download for Windows since I'm using Windows. And since I already have on my computer, I don't need to download this. So I'm just going to console this. And you can just open that zip file. And inside of that, there is this angrok.executable. So what we're going to do is to extract this into a location or into a folder. So I'm just going to so I'm just gonna move that inside of my project E folder. And then I'm going to select, say, for example, softwares. So I'm just going to open that in a new window. And inside of this, we can just move or extract angrok. So I'm just going to extract that right over here in the software's folder of my project project drive or e-drive. And then the next thing that we're going to do is to set up our system variables. So if you don't know what that means, that's where you can set up your NPM as well too. So you can use NPM globally. And then we can just close this zip file and open our computer system variable. So hit right click on your computer and then select properties and that should open your system. And then I'm going to select advanced system settings and that should open the following window. And then I'm going to select environment variables and that should open, of course, environment variables window. And then we're going to select the path variable and I'm going to select edit. And then in here, we can just add the path of our software's variable. So I'm just going to copy this and then we're going to add in here. I'm going to add semicolon and then paste the path. So in our case, that would be E drive and then colon and then forward slash and then software or backward. And then press OK if you have paste the path already. Press OK and then press OK again and then press OK again. And then actually there's a problem because I already have Angrok installed on my computer. So I'm just going to get rid of that again on my system variables. And then after that, I'm just going to open my command prompt or shell. And then in here, I can start typing Angrok and then version, I think, or hyphen V. And there you go. Now we have Angrok version 2.3.35. So we can start using Angrok as well as SAMP. So in here, in my command prompt, I can just type Angrok HTTP and then the port. 
in our case, since we're using XAMPP, the port would be 80. So type 8 and 0. Now press enter and that should start your Angrok or your new channel for your local host. And we can just actually, you know what? We're not going to do it here in command prompt because I can't copy it manually. So I'm just going to close this. Instead, I'm going to use VS Code. So I'm just going to open VS Code. And then here in our VS Code, we can just start terminal. And then I'm going to select new terminal. And in here, we can just start typing. Actually, never mind. I'm going to open a new project. So I'm going to select open folder. And then I'm going to select my project folder. So it should be inside a project. And then I'm going to select a new folder or I'm going to create a new folder specifically for this video. So um, new year, new year project. So select folder and that should open our new year folder like so. And then we can start opening or we can, we can use terminal now. So hit new terminal and in here we can just type angrok http 80. So we can just start that and then in here I can just copy the secured URL generated by angrok. So let's just go back to our browser and in here I can just paste the URL and then type uh, dashboard, I guess. Actually, I think we're wrong. We're not supposed to do that inside of our project folder. We should be doing that inside of htdocs or the file where your project's supposed to be. So let's just go back to our VS Code. Instead, I'm going to open a new folder. And then let's open C drive. And then that should be SAMP. Yeah, SAMP. And then htdocs. And then in here, we can just create a new folder. And in here, I'm going to call it New Year Project. Just like before. And I'm going to select the folder. And that should create a new VS Code window. Actually, this shouldn't run anymore because we have closed our previous folder. So I'm going to run terminal again, and then I'm going to type angrok. I'm sorry if this is taking a while. I'm just going to rerun my angrok, and then we can copy the new URL generated by angrok. And just paste that again in here, and then we can type new year project. Press enter, and that should be empty. Awesome. And there you have it. Now we have our secured. Actually, it's not secured. We can just type in here HTTPS like so. And that should be secured. There you have it. Now we can start using this URL or this project URL or this URL to our in our Shopify dashboard. So let's open our Shopify partner account. And then let's just log in. And then once you are in Shopify partners, dashboard we can just open our app or in the apps uh, or in the apps page you can just select your Shopify app so I'm just gonna select uh, weekly how of course and then in here select app setup and then you can just replace the URL with the URL of your project so in here we have the Ngrok URL as well as my new year project folder so I'm just gonna paste it right over here and in here, we can just add token.php and then the next is install.php, like so. So save that. And then I'm just going to upload my template files in that folder. I'm just going to copy the install.php, the generate token.php, as well as the INC folder. I'm just copy that and paste it inside of my New Year project folder. I'm just close this. So these are the files, same files that we use in our in our videos. So inside of INC folder, I have my functions.php as well as the MySQL connect.php. And then let's just open our VS code. And we should have in here our generate token.php. And let me just rename this to token.php because in our dashboard, our app setup, we have type token.php instead of generate token.php. So in here, in our stall, install.php, we can just replace this with the URL provided by Angrok. So here we can just copy this, paste it in here, 
and then we can just concatenate the folder so it should be new year project there you go and then instead of generate token should be token.php and then what else do we need so the api key let's just go back to our app setup and then i'm gonna need the api key so i'm just gonna copy this let's go back to vs code paste that in here there you go and then next what else do we need all right so access scope i don't think we need to set that up and my shopify.com it's all good so let's save this let's open our token.php and in here let's just set up our api key as well as the secret key so i'm just going to copy the secret key and then replace the key in that variable what else do we need so we should have in here the access token we haven't set up the mysql yet oh, never mind we're not gonna do that um let me just save this and then what i'm going to do is to create a new file and i'm going to call this index.php and then inside of this file we can just type php and then check hmm should we though <laughs> actually never mind let me just type in here um get Actually, should we do, um, let me just type a new shop URL variable and then I'm going to get the URL and then we can just use the header function. So it should be location and then just um, redirect them to the install.php. So install.php and then we're going to pass in here a query variable. So it should be shop. And then the value, I'm just going to concatenate the shop URL variable like so. And then with semicolon and then use exit function. Then close the PHP tag. And let's save this. And then what else do we need? What about the functions.php? All right, so we have in here my Shopify.com and all of that. Actually, let me just get rid of this, my Shopify.com because I want to give the entire URL, not just the subdomain. Because it's going to give us a lot of work just to explode the string and just get the subdomain. No, 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 no. All right. So what else do we need? Let's save this. We have nothing to fix more. Let's open install.php in here. The shop. And then let's just get rid of my Shopify.com. Like so. And save this. And let's open our dashboard again. And then... What I'm going to do, honestly, is to open a new store. So let's actually open the stores page. Uh, let's open the example development store. And if you take a look, I'm already working on theme development. So you guys have to wait for that. So let's open the example development store. And I guess what we can do actually is to open a new tab and type the URL. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it in here and type shop and then give the url of our development store so i'm just going to copy this and then paste it in here and if we actually press enter this should redirect us to the installer page all right so we have an error so it says admin auth so basically what that means is the variable shop is empty so let's open our vs code once again all right so in index.php we have the shop URL variable and we're getting the... Oh, it's not supposed to be URL, it's supposed to be shop. My dumbass. Save that, go back to browser and then redo it again. So first is the URL of our project and then type shop and then our my Shopify domain. So let me just copy this, paste it in here and then press enter once again. And this time it should work. And there you go. Now you can create Shopify apps locally. Let me just click install unlisted app. And there you go. Now we have a Shopify app token or access token. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have created our own Shopify app locally without using a host or a server. So right now or from now on, you can start working on it locally. You can use API calls and all that. If you're interested, you can check my playlist. I'll put the link in the lesson description. I have all of the stuff that you need to get started with Shopify app development. So feel free to watch all of them. I'll put the link in the lesson description or in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them out in the comments below. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like.